Hi everybody, this is Jacob Reed from ReviewEcon.com and today we're going to be going over the Macroeconomics uh, 2022 Set 1 FRQ. Uh, this is an unboxing video. I, before today, haven't seen these questions and I have no idea what the rubrics are actually going to say. So there's always a chance that I miss some of these questions, uh, but uh, this is my best guess of what I think will be accepted as answers for this year's uh, scoring. But again, I don't know. So, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Put in the comments, let me know if you agree with my answers or uh, have some other ideas. Let me know, all right? Uh, so here we go. First of all, we have uh, uh, our current economy uh, or a country's economy is operating below full employment. And we're going to draw an ASAD model using the labels they've told us to label. So here that is for me. Uh, it is a recessionary gap because we're operating below full employment. And uh, so YF there is marked below the long run aggregate supply curve. Y1 is there, it's a lower output than the full employment output. And PL1 there is marked at the intersection of the SRS and the AD curve. All right, next question, we have to identify a fiscal policy action that could restore full employment. Since we have a recessionary gap, there are two possible answers, increasing spending or decreasing taxes. Nothing that you mentioned regarding in uh, um, monetary policy, that's not what they're looking for here. So no buying or selling bonds, no discount rate, no reserve requirement. Um, this is fiscal policy action only, which is taxes and spending. All right, so increasing taxes, decreasing spending. And next, we're going to assume that no fiscal policy action is taken, but there's a change in investment that has a final impact of $200 billion on real GDP. All right, uh, we're going to calculate the, calculate the minimum change of investment that could have caused that increase assuming a marginal propensity to save of 0.25. So the spending multiplier is what we have to figure out here. One divided by the MPS of 0.25 gives us a multiplier of four. And so you take that final change of $200 billion, divide it by that multiplier of four, the spending multiplier of four, and that is a original change of investment of $500 billion. So that would be the increase in investment of five, $50 billion, not 500, excuse me, $50 billion. And that would have caused a $200 billion increase in overall real GDP, All right? For D, we're going to assume that the original inflationary gap, was, or excuse me, uh, in recessionary gap was $800 billion. And we're going to show the impact of that investment spending change that we just saw on the ASAD model. And you're putting that back on the graph that we already drew in part A. So the AD curve is going to shift to the right here, but because the gap is 800 billion and we only had a change in real GDP of 200 billion, it's not going to actually close the gap. The gap would still be uh, at, at least uh, $600 billion worth of uh, recessionary gap. So uh, we, we do close the gap somewhat, but you should not go all the way back to, uh, to long run equilibrium. And I think that'll be worth a the point there to not go back all the way to long run equilibrium. So you have that rightward shift, but don't fully close the gap, all right? Next, uh, for E, given our answer in part D, is the actual rate of unemployment greater than, less than, or equal to the natural rate of unemployment? And we have to explain here. So it is greater than, and that's because our current output is still, even after that AD shift, less than the full employment output. And that means we have some cyclical unemployment, by the way. Now we're going to assume that the private savings rate increases. We're going to draw a loanable funds market graph and show the impact of an increase in private savings on that interest rate. So savings are the saving supply. That's the supply curve in the loanable funds market. So we're going to see an increase in that saving supply. That's going to lower the real interest rate in that loanable funds market. So there's a graph there. I think that's what's gonna give you the points on that. Next, based solely, that means we're only looking at the change. Don't get other variables involved here. Only the real interest rate we saw in part F what will happen to each of the following? First, the real GDP. So only focus on that change in the real uh, interest rate. Remember our interest rate just fell. So a decrease in the interest rate is going to increase uh, real GDP in the short run. And that's because, make sure you explain, uh, there will be an increase in gross investment and interest rate sensitive consumption, right? 
And I should, you might want to add there uh, that real GDP uh, is going to increase because of the AD shift that we already drew, right? Now, based solely on that change, what will happen to uh, the long run aggregate supply curve? And we have to explain there, that long run aggregate supply curve is going to increase. And that's because the lower interest rate means greater quantities of gross investment. And that means physical capital is going to be increasing. So it increases the physical capital stock uh, and that causes us to have more potential real GDP in the long run. On to question number two. We're going to assume that commercial banks hold a minimum of 20% of their required reserve of reserves. So that's 20% reserve requirement. Uh, and we're going to assume that the central bank sells. Sells means smaller, remember? Sell smaller, sell smaller. So the Federal Reserve sells $100,000 worth of government bonds to commercial banks. And uh, we have to show or say what will happen, calculate what will happen to the money supply and state the direction. And we're going to show our work. So um, since they're selling these two sent to actual banks, that's going to reduce their excess reserves by $100,000. And now we're going to do the multiplier to find out by how much in eventually it'll take a while uh, for the money supply to decrease by. So we're going to take one divided by 20%. That gives us the money multiplier of five and five times that purchase or the, excuse me, the sale of, of $100,000 worth of bonds gives us $500,000 decrease in the money supply at most, right? Next, we're going to draw a money market graph that shows the change we just did and show the impact on that nominal interest rate. So we have a decrease in the money supply that increases the nominal interest rate. And there you go. You should have a vertical money supply curve there with a downward sloping money demand curve. On to number C or letter C. Uh, we're going to, uh, based on that uh, change in the money supply, we're assuming that the velocity of money is constant and uh, we have to say what will happen to nominal gross domestic product and explain. Now this question is about the MV equals PY formula. Remember both sides of that formula will equal nominal GDP. And so we're going to see a decrease because nominal GDP is the money supply times the velocity of money. And with more money supply and a constant velocity of money, that means we have to have a higher amount of nominal GDP, it's just mathematically the case. So I'm hoping, I'm a little little worried about my explanation, but I think it'll work. Uh, hopefully we'll see what the rubric says when it comes out, right? On to D, based on that change in nominal gross domestic product, what happens to the price level if real GDP uh, is constant? So again, we know that nominal GDP increased and, or excuse me, uh, nominal GDP decreased as we see there. And so uh, we know that M times V equals equals nominal GDP, but so does P, which is the price level, times real GDP. So uh, what's happening here? Well, we have to have a decrease, right? You don't have to say why, just state decrease. And that's because uh, nominal GDP has decreased. Next, uh, for number three, Italy and Japan are trading partners. They have flexible exchange rates. Um, and uh, so we're just going to calculate uh, the conversion here. So we have a coat that costs 120 euros in Italy, and we have one euro equals 100 yen. So you're just gonna take that 120 euros, times it by 100, that tells you how much it would cost in yen. And so it's a, a 12,000 yen. You don't have to show the math, you just state it. There you go. For B, we're going to assume that the real interest rate increases in Japan, identify what will happen to net financial capital flows. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to have an inflow into Japan and we're going to have an outflow from Italy. Um, so that, because remember interest rates are, are what foreign investors get paid. So they are going to seek those higher interest rates. So money flows to the country with the higher interest rate and out of the country with the lower interest rate. Uh, next, we're going to draw a graph of the foreign exchange market for the yen and show the effect of the increase in real interest rates in Japan on the value of that yen. So I think either one of these graphs are going to be acceptable or you could do a double shift and have both of them. I'm sure that will be fine as well. But we're going to remember money flows to the place with the higher interest rate. And so money is going to flow 
into uh, Japan. So we're going to see an increase in the demand for Japanese yen. Uh, you could also see a decrease in the supply of Japanese yen because if you already have Japanese yen, you'll, you'll be less likely to sell them because you're seeking that high interest rate and you've already got the currency that pays the high interest rate. Uh, so either one of those shifts I, I expect will be okay and, uh, and possibly a combination of the two. You could do a double shift. All right. Next up, we've got D. So based solely on the change in uh, the exchange rate identified in part C, what will happen to Italy's exports uh, in Japan and explain, uh, I say we're going, they're going to increase. And that's because the appreciation of the yen makes Italian goods relatively cheaper for Japanese consumers, right? Exchange rates being uh, the appreciation makes, that, uh, makes the yen more valuable and it takes fewer yen as a result in order to buy more Italian goods. So we should see an increase, all right? And there you have it. Those are my answers. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. Uh, if you didn't get this version of the test, perhaps you had uh, set two, check out that video. If you also didn't have those ones, well, then you had either the international version or an experimental version, and you're never going to likely find out what those questions were, or at least be able to talk about them, uh, because they are probably never going to be released. All right. Uh, but I hope everybody did well. You'll find out in July when the College Board releases those exam uh, uh, scores. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching. Uh, let your friends know about it when they take this class. Take care.